So uh, visualizing data uh, is becoming an ever increasingly important part of, of doing, um, um, doing data. So doing data analysis. So uh, uh, pictures are, are, are intuitive. We, we understand much more naturally pictures. And I got a slide that I'll show you in just a minute that will, will um, uh, highlight that. And so we'll learn, learn a bit about um, histograms, how to create them, um, polygons, um, what they are, uh, what, what, to, what to do with those. And then um, uh, we'll introduce the concept of skew and kurtosis skewedness and kurtosis and how to do those in Excel um, and using Excel to, to to create charts and to modify charts and the different types of charts and how to use them so all right so this um, uh, <clears throat> let's I guess march right on through this process so Back in the day before there was easy uh, chart making capabilities, I'm sure some of you will remember this, having to sit down with a piece of graph paper, <laughs> making chart, making, making uh, histograms. And so we're going to go over that here in a second. But, uh, uh, but we, we illustrate data to visually represent the measure of, of, of central tendency and the measure of uh, 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 variability so um, <clears throat> um, and when we examine a distribution of data uh, having these representations helps us to intuitively understand the data a little bit more uh, most of us have probably seen um, you know the, 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 the pie charts and the uh, bar charts and, and the line graphs and all that kind of stuff and uh, and they're somewhat intuitive uh, and understandable, uh, but you know the people who are who are pro who are uh, creating um, new software um, programs for analysis are getting very creative and are thinking about the, the end user of of um, of of uh, uh, analyzed data. I remember when I was reading this chapter, or rereading, and I read it, I don't know how many times now, but when I was rereading this chapter, I thought about a news story that I couldn't actually find on NPR, so maybe I didn't hear it there, but I'm pretty sure it was. But there was a fellow who was using a um, statistical program to uh, project the daily... Um, uh, well-being census or something like that. So this was at a large hospital, and and they they took a, a census of the of the well-being of somebody. It was patients or probably patients, um, and um, and he could run that anytime he wanted to. It was an ongoing thing, um, and rather and for years he got that data in you know a pie chart or a line chart or something like that, and. And he could understand and read that, but he got tired of that, and it didn't really work real well uh, to intuitively kind of know what's going on. So he developed or worked with somebody to develop charts that look like this. Now this this is an actual uh, output from from a, a chart that I created using using a script. Uh, you know, I'm not real familiar with it, but it just it just illustrates what what can be done. Um, um, with today's modern software, and so, so um, I labeled them what I decided to label them. But um, um, if we if we look at the um, 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 the various smiles, and this is what what. Um, they were talking about in the news program. You know, each of these smiles are subtly different when they say something. And the human mind 
can much more quickly ascertain meaning than they can, you know, using your your you know your old-fashioned you know line chart or curve chart or some, you know one of those kind of charts with you know data points sticking all over it um, um, is understandable, but we're naturally equipped to understand this stuff. Facial expressions, so so it's it's kind of an exciting new world for 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 researchers. Um, so um, David Letterman's you know top ten list of things to do to get a great figure: uh, minimize the junk, uh, you know, make a plan, uh, think about what you want to to communicate, not just you know you know sometimes it's limited by what you can communicate, which is limited by your your data. Uh, but think about your audience, what you want to say, and and um, and how you want to say it. Um, and and probably, uh, of course, you want to label everything. But you know, most important is try to communicate just one idea, or stay within the the bailiwick of of one major idea. Um, Don't overdo do your do your your graphs. Um, um, uh, if you uh, are freehanding graphs, remember that there is a scale to be maintained because people look at uh, graphs and they look at them visually and they interpret them uh, intuitively. Even though you may have you may have numbers that represent something. Say for example, you've got uh, a graph that looks like this. Um, uh, so you've got one observation um, that is is that number, and you've got another observation that is looking like that. And so even though there are um, um, uh, a lot of difference, say there's two observations here, and there's two thousand here. Um, when we look at that, even though it's labeled, our mind says, well, there's about three times as many in the blue column as there are in the, in the red column. Um, and that's going to confuse your audience. So, so that's, that's a real important th thing to do. Uh, and, and sometimes you will, you will see uh, old time scale uh, bar graphs that we drew out by hand. You know, we, we would see a little... Uh, slash coming through it sideways, pardon my drawing, that indicated that that there's um, there's a break in the data here. And then we would it would force us to look at the number. So it says, oh, there's 2,000 in here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't know of, of Excel doing stuff like that. So, uh, so remember, keep it simple. Uh, it's much, it would be much better in this type of data to, to show a pie chart which I hate pie charts. Most people don't like pie charts. Um, um, with just that, just that n equals two labeled right there with a little arrow, and then two thousand over here to indicate to your audience that oh, there's this gross difference between the two. Uh, limit your words in your figures. Uh, um, let your text of your narrative speak. Now, of course, if you're if you're making a, a figure for a poster or something like that, where you don't have enough a lot of words, uh, you 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 want to think of the context of where am I going to use this figure. Um, so, but the, the basic idea is that you want to be able to. Um, um, You want to be able to communicate a, a message with the table alone. That somebody can look at it as a, a freestanding um, uh, document and get some meaning out of it. Okay, uh, frequency distributions. Um, when we when we uh, think about um, graphically representing frequency distributions. It's where we get into thinking about the histogram. Histogram, a normally distributed histogram, is going to look something like this. 
uh, <clears throat> uh, but we often don't get normal histograms, but that's neither here nor there. So um, what a histogram is, is just simply a method of tallying and representing the number of times a certain score occurs. And um, um, so if there's a two, we just one two, we count it once. If there's 500 twos, we count it 500 times. So this is not averaging, this is frequency. Uh, and then we we create class intervals. And when we when we see our uh, Excel toolbox a little later on, you're going to see something called a bin, a B I N, and uh, and uh, and that is is when you think of the word bin, it's not short for binary. Uh, it's it's uh, really I think it just represents a bin, like you would throw a bunch of potatoes into the potato bin and hold them there. So it's a holding place for a range of data. So uh, and depending on the the size of your data, uh, uh, you know does. You know, what does your data average, for example? Um, what is the overall range of your data? Um, <clears throat> all those kind of things are going to take into consideration what your class interval is. Um, uh, so if, um, if you have uh, uh, hundreds of, of separate data points, um, um, you're, you're going to want to want to combine those data points into one class interval. Um, um, so it, it's much easier to um, um, actually represent this um, um, by doing versus by talking about it. So, um, <clears throat> so here's our class intervals. So, and, and the in the mid the midpoint of your, your data is going to be represented by the arrow in this particular uh, uh, slide. And um, so your classes are going to look something like this. We'll just go to the next one where, they, where they, we have that done for you. So um, the interval midpoint is 2. The range is from 0 to 4 uh, of, your, of your, your observations. Um, I mean of your values. So your values uh, 0 to 4, midpoint is 2. 5 to 9, the midpoint is 7. 10 to 14, the midpoint is 12. And when we see these amounts, it just simply tells you how many. So here we see in, in the third column, uh, which is midpoint 12, a range of 12 to 14, what that means is that there are four values that range from from 10 to 14 and and that can be real important and it's very intuitive when we when we uh, create um, um, uh, clustering of, of, of ranges uh, so so say for example uh, uh, we want to look at uh, incomes uh, we may group them by by uh, you know ranges of twenty thousand dollars in income to give us a, a certain range, or you know we may look at ages and decide well there's some naturally occurring ages out there maybe we want to cluster them by by you know zero to six uh, you know as far as the developmental stage uh, that would be um, um, eh. <laughs> uh, pretty operational well. I'm think of my Erickson here. Uh, <clears throat> so you've got some concrete operations. You've got you've got uh, um, uh, six to six to fourteen, um, fourteen to twenty. Whatever your ranges are, you may cluster them uh, depending on what you want to develop, what you want to um, uh, present, and why. So. Um, When drawing one from hand, by hand, we used to just simply go through and, and mark off every time we 
we hit a value, and then that's how we would we would draw these things. I remember after drawing these silly things on, on graph paper. So um, now Excel has a, a histogram tool that um, uh, is is interesting uh, in that it doesn't need to have your data in a nice neat row, a nice neat column or row. You can be in a matrix, but it can also be in a column or a row. So, so think about that. I don't, I don't know much. Uh, you know who's going to to deliver data look, looking like this. You know, it's it's not something that most of us are going to enter data like. I mean, on you know some odd case where we want to keep all the data in view. Um, 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 we want to keep all the data in view on the spreadsheet. We might put it like this, and it might also be that these are scores for for X number of different people. So this person A, person B, or maybe work room B, you know, work group D, C, etc. So maybe these are just different case management teams or or locations or something like that that you want to to create a histogram uh, of the total, and so it naturally comes like this. So. <clears throat> Um, mostly the um, the um, the um, scores will come in as just a single column. So once you've decided what your column is and where your um, where your your data uh, lies, uh, you have to decide on how many bins are you going to put this data in, and uh, whereas. Um, some other statistical analysis tools have the, have a built-in function that um, will estimate the best uh, bin number. Uh, Excel doesn't have that, so you got to use your you got to use your 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 knowledge. Uh, so, and here we can see it looks like we've got them in in intervals of five, starting from zero to four, uh, on up to uh, 49 at the top, so 45 to 49 is the top. So, um, um, <clears throat> histogram two tool. Although we look at it here, it's like why they're showing us uh, analysis single factor highlighted. I don't know, but histograms way down here, and it's in alphabetical order. Um, <clears throat> What the histogram uh, box does when we select it is, is it uh, pulls up a a, um, a um, dialog box for us, and um, much like what we saw with the descriptive statistics, we've we've got an input range, uh, but in this place, in this one, we got a specific thing called the bin range. Uh, you notice in this example that the the labels is unchecked. Well, why do they want to do that? Well, we go back here and look at at this. We can see that our our data resides in this square rather than in a column. So so if we were to say date labels, it would want to look into each one of these and find a. Um, um, it would want to look at each one of these top ones and find a label. It could find one for bins because it's right there. So, so uh, we just need to select this range of data and this range of for our bin number. Um, and that and that we can see we have here. So we've we've got G2 through G11. That's our bin range. A2 through E11, which is our um, data range. We're going to put it in output over here in H, which is right next door, and um, <clears throat> and then we'll we'll hit OK, and it'll it'll produce a, a histogram. Now now again we look at at the output here, and the output didn't match the, of 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 the publisher's um, slide does not match with what we just saw, and that's a that's a uh, Technical foul, as Dennis Daly used to say, it's a technical foul. So, in order to see that that beautiful histogram chart, you would have had to 
to collect hit um, um, a chart output and in order to um, um, to get the um, this nice little uh, line here that kind of kind of just goes up like that um, <clears throat> we would have to collected uh, cumulative percentage so um, a couple of things that, that they're missing it here so anyway the histogram as it is known from from the old days of um, of, of statistics is this right here this is the histogram this little cat over here this little chart with the bars on it that's a graphic representation of the histogram and um, so if you if you've ever remembered doing these histograms uh, uh, where you you've created your bin number um, uh, and you've gone you've had to go through and count look through all here okay how many how many values are between are, are four or less so we've got if you look around over here and we find that there's a two we put a little mark in here we go through and that was it and there's two that's that's going to be between five and nine and it was a process of going through and marking off and counting into here it took a long time Excel's wonderful in that regard so and this is just the 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 presentation of it uh, <clears throat> I will go over this a little bit more when we when we I'll just demonstrate one it's much easier um, now a frequency polygon is a continuous line that represents the frequencies of a score within a class interval so so uh, what's that mean well it means this um, the the polygon is 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 just uh, a shaped line and it can be any shape and what it does is is you just draw a point from place to place to place to place to place so if there had been uh, another point here I'll say let's say there was a whole bunch of of, uh, of um, 25 to 29s so say there was instead of having um, 10 of them we had 15 of them it would have looked like this so it would have just drawn from um, from um, um, like that so as the, as the 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 frequencies change the the shape of the polygon change as the frequencies of the, the histogram change uh, the um, uh, the the height of the bar would change. So um, uh, <clears throat> okay, I lost my recording button for a moment. Am I still here? Testing. Okay, I'm still here. Um, hope I didn't have a big break of time. Um, You can draw a polygon uh, using infinite number of, of, of data points, whereas um, uh, histograms require you to collapse into equal classes. So, so um, <clears throat> you, you, sometimes you'll see charts that look like this. You know, and they're just simply charting every every accounting of, 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 of data now uh, if you have that's fine if you have lots of data points but if you don't have lots of data points sometimes you'll you'll see and every year I see a student who, who, who submits a, a, a polygon a line chart that looks like that where okay here's there there's there's um, um, you know uh, what does that look like there's nine data points for for um, uh, six-year-olds, but there's only two seven-year-olds. <laughs> uh, then there's ten eight-year-olds, and then there's three nine-year-olds. So, so that sort of thing really makes for for an, for not only an ugly chart, but something that isn't very usable. So, so um, polygons. Um, when they're drawn over the um, uh, the histogram will start to smooth out like that so it'll ignore 
you know, the fact that, you know, there's, 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 uh, you know, very few eight year olders, I mean, very few seven year olders, but a whole lot of six year olders. It'll add, you know, those six, seven, eight, and nine together and give you the more smooth looking uh, polygon. Um, <clears throat> cumulative frequencies, uh, you know, I don't know why anybody bothers charting cumulative frequencies. Um, it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't do much for me. Um, it will, um, uh, it will, um, if you know what you're looking for, it will let you know that you have a distribution that's somewhat normal or not. So say for example, this, this, um, uh, this cumulative frequency here, which the, this this is the name for them. They're called ogives, and there's a way to pronounce it, ogiva, or something like that. Um, um, we we can see this this over here on the left looks something like a a a, 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 a bell curve, but then it just keeps on going up, and it keeps on going up rather rapidly, and then it starts to smooth off. Well, if we were actually to take this and in, in, invert this, we would see that over here on this other side, it's going to look something like that. So, pardon my drawing. That's actually not too bad. Um, um, so, frequency distributions. If you remember when we did our our um, data analysis tool pack last last week and we're going to do it again here in just uh, a few minutes. The, um, <clears throat> the, the, the tool pack gave us the average or the mean, the standard deviation, which is the variability. It also gave us goodness and kurtosis, uh, which are, uh, again, two uh, uh, terms that we haven't talked much about yet. So. Um, so in a normally distributed uh, um, um, population of, let's say, students, so um, um, we're going to see the averages for these three different groups, the, you know, group A, group B, and group C, uh, they're going to look about the same. Uh, and um, um, so even though the distributions are identical, they have different averages, and and, and these will show up in 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 um, uh, very large groups if you do if you do averages on large groups. Um, um, however, sometimes um, <clears throat> um, uh, a distribution through three different groups uh, can have uh, the identical mean or average, we can see that each one of these distributions have the uh, the, the same mean, um, but they have a different uh, a different distribution to them. Uh, and um, <clears throat> to understand these two concepts, uh, you know, let's think back to uh, the first uh, averages where we got these three uh, these three groups that had the same mean well these three groups have you know roughly uh, uh, the same peak frequency but they've got very different means so um, each one of these um, um, has the uh, 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 Lucy. All right, had a little um, moment of something I could check on. Um, skewedness. So when we, when we think of, of our distribution being skewed, uh, we think of it leaning to the left or leaning to the right. Uh, uh, when it leans to the left, it's thought to be, it, it's called positive skewed. And the only reason you need to know that is sometimes uh, people will write that in a uh, article that the distribution had a positive skew. So that means it leans towards the lower scores. So more more people, 
the mean is closer to the lower end of the range. If there's no skew, that means that the mean is just right in the middle of, of, the, of that range. And then the, uh, the negative skew would be when, when values cluster around uh, the, um, the, um, um, the, the higher ranges. So uh, when I was doing some um, um, uh, analysis of, of uh, the National Household Survey of Drug, drug Abuse, uh, oh no, the National S Survey of Drug Use and Health, um, <clears throat> I did some um, descriptive statistics, like you're supposed to, on age, and, um, and I noticed that it had a negative skew, I mean, a positive skew to it. And I thought, oh, this is supposed to come from a, um, a normal distribution. What's the deal here? And, uh, well, what the deal was that they oversampled young people. So it, it had a, 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 a distribution that looked more like that. So as far as frequency of, of, um, of, of people who were younger was, was more over here on the younger side than it was on the, on the, on the older side. Because the younger value was 12 was the minimum value of that. And the older, and some of them was 101. There was a 101 year old person in one of those surveys. So, um, so anyway, now kurtosis on the other hand is, is, is about as opposite from skewedness as you can get. The means of, of, um, of, um, um, of a, um, <clears throat> you've got three distributions here that all have the same mean but they have different uh, 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 kurtosis. Um, and what that means is, is, and we'll just take them one by one. In distribution A, this is just said to be a flat kurtosis. Um, uh, and this is, distribution C is called a peaked uh, 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 kurtosis. And, the, and this one is a normal kurtosis or no kurtosis. Um, so what happens in distribution A, uh, and I wish I would have made these different colors, is the range of values is more more distributed across the 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 range of values. This is where you've got um, <clears throat> uh, um, large standard deviations. Um, uh, um, and then over here, we've got the exact opposite, where we've got a narrow deviation from the norm for each value. Uh, so things are kind of clustering around around the center. So if the low score is is 10 year olds and the high score is 20 year olds, 20 year olds, a lot of these are going to be 15. They're going to be 14, 15, 16 year olds are going to predominate in this distribution. So, so when you're creating an Excel chart, um, you, you create them for the uh, um, to communicate a message. Uh, you also cr create them to kind of visually represent things to yourself for analytical purposes. Um, uh, but mostly, Excel is useful in creating charts to, to deliver a message. Uh, um, uh, there's a lot of different ways to use Excel, some of which um, um, you'll do in this class. So you'll do make an Excel chart to highlight some data. Um, uh, <clears throat> you can um, uh, use it to help you understand the data. Um, uh, when you create uh, uh, a um, chart in Excel, uh, that particular chart stays linked to the data. So, uh, so that's something to, to think about if you're using your chart, particularly in, in um, uh, delivering information that is dynamic. So say, for example, um, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, you've got a web page 
uh, that you want to you want to present some information about. If you have a linked Excel chart, uh, you have a linked Excel chart in your web page. When you update the, the 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 Excel chart wherever it's located at, you can then uh, it'll automatically up, upload on, onto the onto the, the web. Uh, people also use them in PowerPoint presentations. I should have made one in a PowerPoint presentation. Um, maybe I'll do that next time. But um, uh, you can cut and paste. Uh, so so and you can make a lot of different types of charts. So we'll make a quick uh, uh, bar chart. Um, in a minute and um, to, to demonstrate this so so um, using bar charts is very straightforward um, uh, it's simply a column with a label on it and then you put the number of, of items um, in the um, uh, column uh, you, you Click up here on the type of chart you want, and then you and then you pr present enter, and it'll make it'll make a nice little chart. So the chart tools um, <clears throat> can can you know allow you to select colors. Um, you know I would really stay away from these cylinder charts, these coned and pyramid charts. They're 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 interesting, but uh, they're usually more confusing and they're not worth it. Uh, once you once you've made a chart in Excel, we we, we see here uh, that it that it picked up the label name for us, and so that that's cool. Uh, but it didn't give us a very sexy title, and I'll show you in a minute how to do that uh, in Excel. Um, <clears throat> this particular type of chart is used to visualize. Um, usually three similar items um, across uh, a range of time uh, or three different uh, data points. Um, um, if, you, if you're running, this has got three different colleges in the cases of mono, um, uh, you can see that, that there's, there's certain um, uh, trends that go on that they start to peak during the, the, the winter season. Um, uh, <clears throat> pretty easy, straightforward to, to make. You just need to know that you, you you have to have your data set up in a in a certain uh, uh, format. Um, pie charts are good for for representing these. Uh, uh, qualitative of these categorical differences uh, even though I don't tend to like pie charts that much um, and then finally pivot tables um, um, uh, pivot tables allow you to rearrange your, your data in a way to to make um, uh, make more sense of it it's it's really a, a, a diagnostic uh, uh, and analysis tool so you've got, in this case, we've got these IDs, which is just going to represent an individual. We should not, we should just get rid of that. We don't, we don't need that. That can, that are, that are fall into one or two categories, either gender one or gender two, and they belong to some category, let's say treatment team or whatever, uh, A, B, and C. So, in order to create a a a, a pivot table. Um, uh, you just select the range from the pivot table uh, creating chart. I mean, uh, creating a pivot, create a pivot table dialog box, uh, and then it will bring up this dialog, which shows your two groups of, of, of gender and category. Uh, and then you select where you want them to go in in uh, which place. Um, uh, which will give you the row labels and the totals and what it, it is it's a counting function uh, so we have column a B and C um, and then from there we can make charts so it's much easier just to show that than it is to to talk about it so I'm going to go ahead and and um, 
uh, bring up an Excel spreadsheet to, to give you the. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the Excel examples of the histogram and using a um, a um, pivot table into a separate um, uh, separate recording. Uh, that way uh, you can break them up a little easier.